let's add fences and fence gates to Minecraft using fabric. Let's see how to do that. All right, we find ourselves back in IntelliJ once more. And in this tutorial, we're going to add fences and fence gates to Minecraft. And this is actually a fairly straightforward process, at least in terms of code. Once again, the JSON files are the things that are going to be the bulk of the work. We're gonna, of course, copy those over, but those are all available to you in the description below, either in the GitHub repository or as individual gists as well. Now, first of all, in our mods block class, we're going to copy these slabs twice here, and we're gonna call this the Ruby fence. And then of course, not forget the name Ruby fence as well. And then this is going to be the Ruby fence underscore gate. And then here as well, Ruby underscore fence underscore gate. Now, instead of of slab blocks the first one is of course going to be a fence block here and then the gate is going to be a fence gate block now we can use those freely so the constructors of those are actually public so we don't need to add any more code this is all the code that we need for the fence and the fence gates however the json files is where it's really at all right so i've copied over the json files and as you can see the ruby fence is actually a multi-part so this is not the worst json file that we've seen so far we basically simply apply another model to this post when certain conditions are true. The idea being is that we basically add the side part of the fence if there is another fence to the north or, you know, the east to the south or the west. That's basically the idea of this multi-part here, right? Once again, if you have a different mod ID or a different type of fence you want, you can, of course, select this and press Control R and then change it here with Replace All. Same with the Ruby. Simply select it and then press Control R and then you can change it to whatever you want. I can definitely advise to do that instead of, you know, typing all of this out. That is, of course, madness. Right in the Ruby fence gate is once again a little more complicated, but it also simply points to different models depending on a few different variables here. So whether or not it is inside of a wall, whether or not it is open or closed, and then, of course, the facing variable again to rotate the block around. Right, now onto the block models. So I'm going to copy all of those over. As you can see, it's quite a few. Let's first of all take a look at the four fence gates. So as per usual, the texture simply points to the Ruby texture. What is very important here is that this doesn't point to textures and then all, but it points to texture texture here. So this is one of the things that you need to keep in mind when using the texture for the fence gate and the fence parents. This is always a texture. But overall, they are not that interesting to us, all things considered. Simply the parent changes from, well, template fence gate to template fence gate open, template fence gate wall, and template fence gate wall open. So those are all of the four fence gate block models. And then there's three fence models. One of them is the fence inventory. This is simply so that the inventory fence displays properly. There is the post. So this is simply the individual post that you put into the world and just the post is there and then the side is only the side part of the fence which is then of course added depending on if the fence has any neighbors. Right, let's copy over the item models as well. The item models, as you can see, the fence gate simply points to the fence gate block model and the Ruby fence points to the Ruby fence inventory. So that's very important that this points to the inventory model so that it all displays properly. Right, so once again, we actually do not need to add any texture because all of the textures are taken from the Ruby block. We do need to, however, add a new tag and that is under a new namespace. So in our data folder, directory Minecraft, and then instead of that folder, new directory tags, right click new directory blocks, and then inside of here, right click new file fences.json and I'm going to copy over the contents here. This is of course a simple and normal tags file. Now we need to add our fence to it so that our fence actually connects to each other. Now this fence will now only connect to a nether brick fence as well. It will not connect to wooden fences. If you're creating a wooden fence, you would need to add this to the wooden fences tag. Check the external libraries to see what tags are available here for Minecraft. So as you can see, if I go down here to Net Minecraft 171 map, Netfabric MC yarn, and so on and so forth, we can go into the data folder, Minecraft tags blocks. And then as you can see, here are all of the Minecraft vanilla tags, as well as some mineable tags. We're gonna talk about those in a future tutorial as well. And then if we go down here, for example, you can see that here, for example, we have the wooden fences tag and all of the wooden fences are in there. Right, last but not least, let's not forget to add the translation to the en underscore us json file. And once all of those have been added, let's see if it works. Or if I was a black and micro once more, and as you can see, the blocks have been added to the game. So the fence and the fence gate are successfully added. 
obviously they work exactly how you would imagine them to. I can also stack them on top of each other, stuff like that. So everything works just fine. The nether brick fence and for example any of the fences here. So the wooden fences as you can see they do not connect and the nether brick fence of course they also don't connect to the wooden fences. However these two do connect because of course both of them are added to the fences tag. So that's one of the things that you should keep in mind. Alright but that would be it for this tutorial right here. I hope you found this useful and you'll learn something new. If you did I would of course appreciate a like and I will see you in the next tutorial. So yeah.